grass is going to start looking like it's in foreclosure soon. Like, <laughs> the way the grass is starting to grow now.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Palm Beach Atlantic University, the Rieger Athletic Campus, and J.M. Jake Rubin Park for today's matchup between the visiting University of Tampa Spartans and your Palm Beach Atlantic University Sailfish. Let's meet the teams. First, the starters for the Spartans. Playing center field, number eight, Jordan Lala. Batting second, the second baseman, number two, Drew Earhart. Batting third, the shortstop, number 11, J.D. Urso. The cleanup hitter and third baseman, number nine, Anthony Nunez. Batting fifth, the designated hitter, number 14, Santiago Garavito. Batting sixth, the first baseman, number 25, E.J. Doskow. Batting seventh, the right fielder, number 19, E.J. Kumbo. Batting eighth, the catcher, number 27, Danny Gutcher. And batting ninth, the left fielder, number 10, Miko Saladino. Today's starting pitcher for the Spartans is number 20, Eli Thurman. Tampa's led by head coach Joe Urso, assistant coaches Sam Militello, Jose Jimenez, Andrew Amaro, Mark Johnson, and Scott McNulty. And now, the starting lineup for the Sailfish of Palm Beach Atlantic University. Leading off in plain center field, number 11, Maggie Warren. Second, the second baseman, number 23, Trey Lopez. Batting third and pitching, number 33, Matt Farenda. The cleanup hitter, first baseman, number five, Giovanni Lorenzo. Batting fifth, the shortstop, number 24, Mikey Casaleggio. Batting sixth, the third baseman, for your sailfish, number 16, Pedro Figueroa. Batting seventh, and played right field, number 21, Nate Housen. Batting eighth, and played left field, number six, Jeremy Texel. And catching and batting ninth, number 28, Sean Williams. Your sailfish are coached by Kent Pottenfield, assisted by Bo McMillan and Jack Palma. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise and remove your caps for the pregame prayer followed by the play of our national anthem. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for the chance to come out and play some baseball today, Lord. Uh, I just pray over the actions on the field today that everything be glorifying to you, and that everybody makes it home safe. We love you, Lord, in your name. Amen. <laughs>
wind blowing in lightly from the southeast right to from right to left across the field like usual and Matt Ferranda takes his spot on the rubber and Jordan Lala occupies the left-handed batter's box. First pitch on the way from West Palm Beach. And it sits in there for a strike. Strong fastball there from Ferranda. Finds the inside corner. Ferranda's velocity tops out around 93 miles per hour from the left side. And there it is, same spot, strike two. Jordan Lala can't believe it, but he's in an 0-2 hole to get things started here. And Ferenda deals outside. He can afford to waste a couple here. One and two is your count. And that one's tapped over towards the right side. Bouncing ball should be an easy play, and it is. Lorenzo the over the there at the first base scoops Number it up, two, steps on Drew the bag for the Earhart. first out. Let's go over the defensive alignment for the Sailfish here. Sean Williams doing the catching behind the play today. Battery mates with Matt Ferranda, of course. And then we've got Figueroa over at third base, Casaleggio at short, Lopez back at second base, and then Lorenzo coming out of the DH spot. Now he's playing first. And that one sits right on the outside corner for a strike. In the outfield, we've got Nate Housen over in right. Matty Warren back in center. Good to see him back out there after an injury. And Texel over in left putting some crucial plays together in the last game. That one fouled away off towards the right side. 0-2 oh count. And that one's hit out towards where Casaleggio patrols at shortstop. Strong throw across the diamond. Good scoop over there by Lorenzo. That Goes down in the split the to get it. 11, and that's quickly Urso. two away. Two batted balls for Matt Ferranda and the defense to handle, but so far they have handled it. And now the coach's son, J.D. Urso, steps in the box. And that one finds the outside corner. Umpire gonna give those outside calls all day, you would presume. And he comes back with another one, that one even more in the zone. Four strike two, Matt Ferranda finding his groove early on here. Let's see if he can retire the side. And that one comes inside, hits the dirt. Two and one count. Sorry, one and two count. And that one high and outside. Two and two offering from Ferranda. Strike three, gets him to wave at the outside pitch. So Ferranda gets a strikeout and two putouts to retire the side in the top of the first. Sailfish coming to bat in the bottom.
That's what it means to be a PBA student athlete. Hello and welcome back to West Palm Beach. My name is Caleb Dean. It's a pleasure that you've joined us here on this Saturday afternoon. First game of a doubleheader. Second and third game of the series coming up against Tampa. Palm Beach Atlantic getting out of the top of the frame. No damage done. And now it's Eli Thurman's turn to go to the mound here for Tampa. 1.26 ERA on the year. Three starts, that's a very impressive ERA for that many innings, 14 and a third to be exact. Only two runs allowed over 14 and a third innings. 10 strikeouts, five walks. Only one extra base hit allowed. And Matty Warren Started things off yesterday with a double to the opposite field. Nunez wisely playing the line over there at third base. Matty Warren slapped it right past him to get things started yesterday. And two balls to start things off from Thurman. And Matty Warren lifts it out towards left center. Ranging over is Lala. He'll get there, edge of the track. Now batting for your sailfish. Matty Warren's been making some bids early on, sending balls deep into the outfield. But so far, none have left the yard. And that one ends up in the glove of Jordan Lala. And now Lopez moved up to the number two hole. Waves at the outside pitch for strike one. And that one's low and outside. Low piece, 289 on the year. And that one sits low. And that one's tapped back to the screen foul. And that one's hit out towards Urso at short. And he makes the put out, four out number two. And now Mr. Shohei Otani stepping into the box. Matt Ferranda, the pitcher and number three batter for Palm Beach Atlantic, puts an exclamation point on how important his role is on this team. And that one finds the outside part of the plate to the lefty, Veranda. Rare O for yesterday for Veranda. Average drops to 268. That one's hit out towards Urso. At short, high throw, but handled over there. So, Selfish are retired. One, two, three. We go to the top of the second here from Jake Rubin Park. We'll be right back. This is the University of Tampa.
explore your dreams, discover your talents, get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. Until this past one, five strikeouts as well, four earned runs. Bonfield didn't tax his bullpen too much yesterday after Dan Beebe went into the eighth inning. And that one's ripped towards Costaleggio. Impossible backhand gets past him. Now batting the designated hitter, number 14, Santiago Garavito. And now, Garavito. Eight hits yesterday for Tampa. Garavito didn't have any of them. And off speed sits on the outside corner. Feranda pounding the zone early. And that one in the dirt, one and one. Look over at Nunez, over at first base. Garavito, 333 on the year. Two home runs, eight RBIs. And curveball didn't break, sits high and outside. Two and one is the count. Dan Beebe yesterday gave up six hits over his eight innings, won 123 pitches. And that one's popped straight up. Will it stay in play? Who's going to take it? And nobody will get it. A little bit of lapse in communication. That should have been the catcher's ball. Sean Williams neglecting to leave his post behind the plate, but nonetheless, two and two. And that one's roped down the line. Will it stay fair? It will not, it's a foul ball. And we'll do it again at two and two. Miranda certainly giving up some hard contact so far in this inning. Hoping to avoid further damage. Oh, 
And that one's popped back foul. And running on the pitch, Sean Williams with the cannon, nails him at second base. That's the second caught stealing on the year for Sean Williams. Wow, he's got a cannon from behind the plate. And that is an electric first out here in West Palm Beach. Just what the doctor ordered for Matt Ferranda. You cannot run on Sean Williams. And strike three, Ferranda adds to the electricity with a strikeout of his own. Second one of the afternoon for Ferranda. Beautiful high heat from him. And quickly there are two away here. Great all around play coming out of the Sailfish. Ferranda from the wind up now. And that one sits high and outside. Looks like Ferranda not getting a feel for his breaking ball early on here. Hopefully he can garner that control as the game moves along. Not one single cloud in the sky here in West Palm Beach. It's a beautiful day for baseball. 83 degrees at game time, light wind, about 50% humidity. Baseball player's dream here in South Florida. And that one's demolished deep left field, going back at the wall, and it's off the light post. Home run, it's out of here. Thank goodness there was nobody on base. Only counts as one run, but you could tell right off the bat that was long gone. Now batting for Tampa, the right fielder, number 19, EJ Combo. For Doskow, that's his third home run of the year, aided by the wind. Wind blowing from right to left across the field. It's gonna carry those balls out over the left field wall. And that one sits high and outside. And that one's fouled back. One and two is the count. And that one bounces well in front of the plate. Evens count at two and two. That's only Ferranda's fifth hit allowed this year. However, three of them have been for extra bases. Three and two, two down, top the second. And he comes back into the zone. Sean Williams giving it a look, but no time to get there. Count remains full at three and two. That's what Veranda wants to do with that inside pitch. Jam the lefty batter. Lefty on lefty matchup. Hypothetically, the pitcher would have the advantage. And Combo works out the walk. 
Long battle Tampa, from him. Catcher number 27, Danny Gutcher. Works out in his favor. Now the opposing catcher stepping in. Miranda allowing this inning to go on a little bit longer than he would have liked. And swing and a miss on the outside pitch. Butcher 211 on the year. And that one finds the outside corner. Great spot. Brenda can keep putting it in that spot, especially against the right-handed batters. That certainly will be a recipe for success. And that one's hit over towards the right side, but fielded in foul territory by Lorenzo. 0-2 is the count. Gutcher did the catching yesterday. It was Hausen behind the plate for the Sailfish yesterday. Today, Sean Williams taking up that post. And that one's hit out towards right center field, dropping fast. It's gonna be in there for a base hit, potentially extra bases. Hausen can't get there. It's gonna be an RBI for Gutcher and a two base hit. His second double of the year. And Tampa has added two here in this top of the second. Breaking ball breaks well into the zone, so that's strike one. Saladino relegated to the number nine hole today, struggling. 211 on the year. Only six total bases, one RBI. He's got one out there at second in scoring position. And that one hangs in the zone, but Saladino way too quick on it, yanks it foul. So it's 0-2. Oh, 0-2 offering, foul back. It's a tie. One ball, two strikes. And that one curves inside and hits Saladino. Kind of looks like he leaned into that now one, but the leadoff hitter, the center fielder, number eight, Jordan regardless, Lala. Kent Bottenfield taking a walk out to the mound. Is he going to make a move here? Doesn't look like there's anyone up in the bullpen. Most likely just a strategy conference. This is the first conference.
middle and bottom part of the lineup doing most of the work for Tampa. They strung together eight hits, resulting in two runs. They left a bunch of men on base, which is a tribute to Dan Beebe being an expert at maneuvering out of jams. And that breaking ball breaks high. Jordan Lala almost sticks his head into it. And that one sits outside, 2-0. Roped foul. Plane flies over here at the Rinker Athletic Campus. We are directly in the flight path of Palm Beach International Airport. And that one sits high. Three and one hitters count advantage for Jordan Lala. And that one in the zone four strike, great pitch from Veranda. Infield plays back. Three and two, two down. Runners get a head start. And that one's hit the other way, foul. And strike three, so Matt Miranda able to limit the damage, strands two on base, but Tampa also scores two in the top of the second. We're going to the bottom. Sailfish looking to strike For back. Tampa, two runs on three hits. Two Welcome to the busy day of college football. Let's get caught up on the action. First up, Alabama. This play right here shows what eating chicken will do for you. Lots of broken tackles here. It's the chicken. No idea what you're talking about. Joey Galloway is here with chicken predictions. My what? Touchdown chicken. Okay, are we filming right now? Chicken, 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 chicken. What is going on? I don't know. Oh, that was weird. No management. Start your game day with the new hash brown scramble bowl from Chick-fil-A. Every sailfish team aims to look good on and off the field. So when it comes to our Nike apparel needs, we always turn to Ad Pro Sports. From uniforms to practice gear and everything in between, AdPro Sports outfits all 17 Palm Beach Atlantic sports teams while serving as a one-stop shop from concept to reality. Learn more by visiting adprosports.com.
But Tampa out to a two run lead here. Lorenzo getting his first looks of the day. And that one sits high. You can see Thurman moving at a very brisk pace, as did Michael Paul last night. And strike one, good off speed there on the outside part of the plate. Lorenzo fooled. And that one's tapped foul towards the Sailfish dugout. Quickly one and two. And that one sits low, good take. And that one's grounded down to first, booted over there. Can't find it in foul territory. And Lorenzo will reach on the error. Moscow unable to field that one cleanly, so lead off man on. It's a testament to put the ball in play. Anything can happen. Now the Jersey boy, Casaleggio in the box. And he takes one middle in for strike one. Casaleggio hit two foul balls yesterday that went about 450 feet. Let's see if he can straighten one out today. Oh, he's squaring to bunt, lays it down, but it's foul. Quickly 0-2 on Casaleggio. Casaleggio, 286 on the year, 10 total hits, three RBIs. Only extra base hits so far have been doubles. And that one called strike three. Casaleggio caught looking at that one. Sailfish, the third baseman, number 16, Pedro Figueroa. That is Casaleggio's 11th strikeout of the year. By far leading the Sailfish, who as a team actually haven't struck out very much at all. Only 51 total strikeouts for Palm Beach Atlantic so far this year. And that one's roped out towards center, Figueroa. Put a good, powerful swing on that one, but it finds the glove of Jordan Lala out there in center field, so. Playing right field today. Nate Housen with a OPS over a thousand currently 357 on the year. He's got one of two home runs for the Sailfish so far this year. Quickly 0-2. And three pitch strikeout. Nate Housen retreats to the dugout. Aaron, one left on base. We're going to the top of the third. We'll be right back from West Palm Beach. Well, it's been a busy day of college football. Let's get caught up on the action. First up, Alabama. This play right here shows what eating chicken will do for you. Lots of broken tackles here. It's the chicken. No idea what you're talking about. Joey Galloway is here with chicken predictions. My what? Touchdown chicken. Okay, are we filming right now? Chicken, 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 chicken. What is going on? I don't know. Mm. 
Oh, that was weird. New management. Start your game day with the new Hash Brown Scramble Bowl from Chick-fil-A. In NCAA Division II, student-athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. That's because Division II student-athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student-athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even life-changing impression on all those involved. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Welcome back to the Sailfish Sports Network. University of Tampa beating Palm Beach Atlantic 2-0 here in the early going. Miranda back on the mound, entering his third inning of work. Kept it within striking distance so far. Two runs on three hits. One walk and three strikeouts for Miranda so far. Gonna have to deal with two, three, and four in the order. Earhart leading things off. And first pitch finds his own for a strike. And swing to miss on the off speed stuff, good. Down and in action from Veranda. Finds himself with an 0-2 advantage. And he went around, strike three. Fourth strikeout for Ferranda. Tampa, the shortstop, number 11, J.D. Urso. Popped up on the right side, that'll get out of play. Two and one is the count, one down here. Wind settling down. Flags not blowing as aggressively. Three and one. And that one finds the outside corner. Foul the way off towards the right side. Payoff pitch. Strike three. Fifth strikeout for Ferranda. Coming through the University of Tampa, the third baseman, number nine, Anthony. And quickly, Nunez. there are two away here in the third. Matt Ferranda, product of King's Academy, well as teammate 
Elias Machado, who got the start last night from King's Academy. Reputable baseball program. And that one smoked, but right at Costaleggio, and he grabs it, brings it down. And we're going to the bottom of the third. Selfish, got to get something on the board here. We'll be right back. The Sailfish Booster Club is responsible for raising funds to support our athletic teams with travel, uniforms, and equipment. Even small gifts can go a long way in supporting our teams. It is only through the generous gifts of all of our supporters that all the costs of our athletic programs can be funded. If you are currently a member, thank you. If you are not, please visit pbaselfish.com slash give today and become a member of the Sailfish Booster Club. Academy Bus is the largest privately owned and operated transportation company in the United States and is the official out-of-town transportation provider of Sailfish Athletics. With the Central Operations Center located here in Palm Beach County, Academy Bus is who our Sailfish teams turn to for away game trips. For more information or to reserve a trip for your group, visit academybus.com. Welcome back to nothing Tampa as we go to work in the bottom of the third. Big right-hander Eli Thurman out on the mound still for Tampa. 6'3", 195, right-hander out of Bradenton, Florida. So far he's been exhibiting amazing control of his off-speed pitches, getting some Waves and misses from the Sailfish batters. No hits allowed for Thurman here. Texel going to see if he can change that narrative. Hits it up the middle. Nice backhand play by Earhart. Gets to his feet and throws it out for a 4-3 put out. One pitch, one down here in the bottom of the third. And Sean Williams now takes his turn at bat. Matty Warren on deck. And that one's hit back to the pitcher. Return to sender. Flip to first. 1-3 put out from the underhand toss of Thurman. Two pitches, two outs here in the bottom of the third. And that one finds the outside corner for a strike to Matty Warren. Warren flew out deep to center his first time. And that one sits low. Two and one the count to Matty Warren. Warren on the year so far, 440 average, 11 hits. And check swing foul, that went in on the hands of Warren. Count evens at two and two. Matty Warren getting on base over 50% of his at bats so far. And that one's bounced down at first under the glove of Doskow. See how they score it. That seemed to be a playable ball there, but Doskow already one error in this game. Will it be two now for him? Official score giving Matty Warren the base hit on that grounder to the right side. And now it's Lopez with a man on, two down. Seeing if he can work some two out magic here. Thurman taking a long look down at the playbook strapped to his wrist. And Lopez hits one right at Doskow. 
That thing had an exit velocity of 112.3 miles per hour, but Doskow able to secure it. That ball still steaming in his glove as he trots off the field. We'll be back, top of the fourth, coming your way. The Sailfish Booster Club is responsible for raising funds to support our athletic teams with travel, uniforms, and equipment. Even small gifts can go a long way in supporting our teams. It is only through the generous gifts of all of our supporters that all the costs of our athletic programs can be funded. If you are currently a member, thank you. If you are not, please visit pbaselfish.com slash give today and become a member of the Sailfish Booster Club. Academy Bus is the largest privately owned and operated transportation company in the United States and is the official out-of-town transportation provider of Sailfish Athletics. With the Central Operations Center located here in Palm Beach County, Academy Bus is who our Sailfish teams turn to for away game trips. For more information or to reserve a trip for your group, visit academybus.com. Matt Ferranda, 59 pitches so far in this one, entering his fourth inning of work. Leaving Five strikeouts the under his belt. University of Tampa, the designated hitter number 14, excuse me, the third baseman number nine, Anthony Nunez. Correction, Santiago, D8. First pitch, swing and miss. Matt Ferranda lives on the outside part of the plate against right-handed batters. Garavito looking for his first hit of the day. Swing and a miss on the down and in fastball. Garavito was a strikeout victim his first time now in an 0-2 hole against Palm Beach Atlantic's sophomore lefty. And that one's hit towards the hole. That's gonna be through for a base hit. Nobody able to get to it. So leadoff man on once again. Doskow's had an eventful day so far, solo home run in the second inning. Matt Ferrando is going to have to pitch carefully here. Doskow also caught the tracer off the bat of Lopez to end the last inning. That one bounces in front of the plate. Thankfully, Williams goes down to block it. Williams, arguably the better defensive option for Ken Bottenfield's squad behind the plate. But Nate Housen, the other catcher, significantly better hitter than Williams. And that one's in the dirt. 2-0 and so far, it looks like Matt Ferranda wants nothing to do with Doskow. And that one's hit off the end of the bat over the head of Lorenzo. That's gonna trickle into foul ground. Gonna be extra bases for Doskow as he motors in to second base. The right fielder, number 19, EJ Kumbo. More trouble for Ferranda and the Sailfish here. Second and third, nobody out. Coach Bottenfield's got Devin Blair warming in the bullpen. Will he go to him here? He will, makes the move 
Devin Blair is going to be coming into the game. Ferranda responsible for both runners on base, so the book is not closed on him. But we'll be back after this quick pitching change. It's the game. Now batting for the University of Tampa, the right fielder. Devin Blair, 19, the DJ towering 6'9 graduate student, transfer from St. Leo. Gonna have to deal with Combo here. And that one finds middle middle in the zone for strike one. Tumbo walked and scored his last time. And that one's hit out towards right field. Should be playable for Housen and it is. Makes the one handed catch. Tagging from third and scoring is Garavito. Now batting the catcher, number 27. So Danny sack fly, catcher. RBI run charged to Matt Ferranda. One down, the man on third is Doskow. Devin Blair brings the breaking ball, finds his own for a strike. Devin Blair last appeared in a start against Barry. Went one inning, gave up three runs to the Buccaneers. And swing and a miss, good change up there on the inside part of the plate. Devin Blair, no relation to Davis Blair, also on the Sailfish roster. Catch it in, big 
And that one smokes through the hole. That's gonna be another base hit and RBI for the Spartans. Doskow comes across the, Spartans, the plate. Fielder, number 10, Nico Saladino. And Gutcher, his second RBI of the day. So having himself a nice two for two so far. And now Saladino. That one's lofted out towards right field, way up there. Housing, looking through the glasses, waiting for it to come down, makes the play. Two-handed catch out in right field for the second Nine out. Housing responsible for bo both put outs so far in this inning. And back to the top with Jordan Lala. And running, Sean Williams tested again. A little bit too late on this, and Casaleggio can't handle the throw, the ball trickles behind him. That one misses as well, 2-0 and on Lala. Speedy center fielder has yet to collect a hit in this series. 0 for 6 so far. And he hits that one the other way, foul out of play. Both runs that crossed were charged to Matt Miranda. The book is now closed on him. And that one sits outside. Three and one is the count. hit into right field for a base hit. Housen corrals and throws home, but not in time. Dutcher crosses the plate. Five nothing lead for Tampa here. That batting for Tampa, the second baseman, number two, Drew Earhart. Earhart 0 for 2 on the day. Palm Beach Atlantic softball also trailing currently. They're away at Tampa. Tampa three, PBA one over in Tampa in the softball matchup. Got a five nothing lead here for Tampa in West Palm Beach. On the baseball field.
Collins lifted out towards center. Started back, but now coming in is Maddie Warren, but it's gonna be Lopez that makes the play, retreating on it. And that finally retires the side. So Paul Michelinic coming to bat in the bottom half of the inning. Welcome back to Jake Rubin Park here at the Rinker Athletic Campus. Palm Beach Atlantic has a significant hill to climb here. Five run deficit. And Ferranda takes a strike. Rare cold streak for him. 0 oh for his last six. And that one finds the outside part of the zone as well. Quickly 0-2. Thurman showing no fear on the mound, no hesitation. And that one's hit up the middle. Ranging to his right and making the play is Erhard. Impressive play there on the backhand, turn and fire to retire Ferranda, who was hustling down the line. No matter how we never gonna die. I just wanted you. One down now, bottom of the fourth. That one's popped up shallow center field. Lala coming in. Urso going out. Lala takes charge and puts it away. Now betting for your sailfish, the shortstop, number 24, Mikey Casalegio. Another quick out for Thurman, who has only thrown 34 pitches. He's almost through the fourth inning here. Another chance for Lala in center field. And he'll get there, one, two, three inning. No hits, no runs, no left on base. They're going to the top of the fifth in West Palm Beach. The road to national championships runs through NCAA.com. And whether you follow one college team or all of them, it's never been easier to get the content you want all in one place with live broadcasts of multiple championships across all divisions with exclusive access. The biggest message today is don't change. And highlights for every single championship. Stay in the game all season long with NCAA.com, the home of college sports. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division Two, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's, will you?
Leading off the shortstop, number 11, J.D. Urso. 3, 4, and 5 in the order for Devin Blair to contend with. That one misses outside. And that one's hit out towards left field pretty deep. Going back at the wall, it's off the wall. Over the head of Texel. Casaleggio receives the cutoff and that's a two base knock for J.D. Urso, first hit of the day for him. Now batting the third baseman, number nine, Anthony Nunez. And Nunez, the switch hitter, digging in as a lefty for the first time. And that one's inside. <laughs> University of Tampa, the biggest conference rival for the Sailfish. Palm Beach Atlantic ranked 11th in the preseason poll. Tampa ranked number one for the 16th time in the last 17 preseason polls. Good job. Three and one is the count on Nunez. 22 SSC titles in the history of University of Tampa. So you can see why Palm Beach Atlantic wants to take at least one game from the Spartans. And that one's hit through the hole on the right side. Lopez loses the glove. Trying to scramble for that one. Now batting the designated hitter, Santiago Garavito. Devin Blair having trouble retiring anybody here. Oh. And that one's popped up on the infield. Who's gonna take it? Casaleggio calling and catching for the first out. The first baseman, number 25, EJ Doskow. Doskow twice has hit the ball hard. Once it left the yard over in left center and then a double to the opposite field and came around and scored. And that one's lifted into shallow left center field. Texel charging, makes the catch. Strong throw home, play at the plate. Williams can't handle it. And he didn't tag up in time. And that'll be the end of the inning. The run will not count. 
and we'll be back with the bottom. Selfish coming to bat. This is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams, discover your talents, get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. Welcome back to the Sailfish Sports Network. We have a discussion on the field about whether that last run should be counted or not. The umpire seemingly signaling to us up in the booth that it would have counted. However, the runner over at first failed to tag up and was thrown out over at first. It was a 7-1-3 double play. So umpires currently engaged in discussion about what the proper call is. Pedro Figueroa due up, playing third base yesterday and today for the Sailfish. Figueroa taking up first base for the majority of the non-conference games to start the season. Leading off for the Sailfish, the third baseman, number 16, Pedro Figueroa. Of eyes, looking hard but won't realize that they will never see the P. Still unsure whether the score is six to nothing or five to nothing. And first, first pitch inside to Figueroa in tight. And that one sits in the zone for a strike. Figueroa flew out to center his first time. Hits that one foul for strike two. And that's another tapper foul off the bat of Figueroa. And that one pulled foul as well. Nunez. We do have an official ruling on that previous play in the last half inning. It is six nothing to Tampa. And called strike three.
And that one's popped up. That'll get out of play. Three strikeouts now for Thurmond. Housen was one of the three his last time up. And that one in the opposite batter's box in the dirt. And strike three, so back-to-back -back strikeouts. One looking and one swinging for Eli Thurman. And Texel, last hope for the Sailfish in the bottom of the fifth. Swing and a miss. Good off speed. Thurman showing everyone why he has a 1.26 ERA coming into the day. That went in tight on the hands of Texel. And it's a foul ball dribbler up the line. Tampa lets it roll for a little bit to see if it'll come back fair, but it does not. One, two, the count on Texel. Showing bunt, and they say he bunted at it, so Thurman strikes out the side in the bottom of the fifth. Nothing brewing here for the Sailfish. We go to the top of the sixth. Six-nothing Tampa. Well, it's been a busy day of college football. Let's get caught up on the action. First up, Alabama. This play right here shows what eating chicken will do for you. Lots of broken tackles here. It's the chicken. No idea what you're talking about. Joey Galloway is here with chicken predictions. My what? Touchdown chicken. Okay, are we filming right now? Chicken, 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 chicken. What is going on? I don't know. Mm. Oh, that was weird. No management. Start your game day with the new hash brown scramble bowl from Chick-fil-A. What does... That's what it means to be a PBA student-athlete. Welcome back to the Sailfish Sports Network. My name is Caleb Dean. Glad you've joined us here on this Saturday afternoon. Beautiful day for baseball here in West Palm Beach. Six nothing, however, only one hit on the day so far for the Sailfish, just not able to get anything going against Eli Thurman, who has been dicing up the Sailfish lineup. Seven, eight, and nine in the order due up for the Sailfish, or for the Spartans, Leading rather. Combo right set to lead things DJ off for Kumbo. the Sailfish. On the other side, it's gonna be Devin Blair entering his third inning of work. He's already allowed four hits and two runs to cross. We have a final from Tampa, Selfish Softball, losing to the Spartans four to one. They have another game after this, as does Selfish Baseball. And that one's tapped up the middle, gets past the diving Casaleggio for a base hit. So another leadoff man here. Nine for the Spartans, the catcher, number 27, Danny Spartans catcher. have had the leadoff man on five out of six innings so far. Pickoff try over at first.
Gutcher two for two on the day, responsible for two RBIs as well, having himself a good day. And that one's hit well out towards center field. Matty Warren drifting back, edge of the track. He'll get there to make the play. One away now. Now batting for the University of Tampa, the left fielder, number 10, Nico Saladino. Saladino, only time he's been on base today was when he was hit by a pitch in the second. Devin Blair misses low, four ball one. Brian Webster warming up in the pen for the Sailfish. And that one's lifted out towards left center, shallow, but Texel should get there, and he will, makes the play for the second out. We don't batter, center fielder number eight, Jordan Lala. And back to the top of the order, Jordan Lala getting his third look at Sailfish pitching. Single and an RBI for Lala his last time. Coming into the day, Tampa hitting 327 as a team. Bunting, that fielded in foul territory by Sean Williams, Lala. He'll have to come back and do it again. University of Tampa, 22 SSC titles to their name. And another steal attempt. Good throw down by Sean Williams. Raises his hands in disbelief. Can't believe there was no out call made. Sean Williams has already gunned down one from behind the plate today. Looks like it could have been a second. And that one in there for a strike. One and two, two down, top of the sixth here. And just got a piece of it, did Jordan Lala. So we'll do it again at one and two. And that one fouled off as well, so count remains one and two. Some chirping coming out of the Tampa dugout, sounds like Devin Blair taking too long on the mound for their liking. And that one high and outside, trying to advance to third, no throw. 
Sean Williams eats it, so. Wild pitch pops out of the glove of Sean Williams. Can't really blame him for that one. Two and two, two down. And another foul ball, Jordan Lala putting up quite a fight in the batter's box. Repeatedly making contact with tough pitches, just barely fouling them off. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming. And that one's roped up the middle. That's gonna be another base hit with an RBI attached. Seven nothing Tampa. Jordan Lala gets his second Tampa, RBI of the day. Two, Good inside Earhart. out hitting. Smacks it up the middle past the reach of Casaleggio. And Bottenfield heading out to the mound, presumably to make a pitching change here. <laughs> Devin Blair exiting the game. Ryan Webster coming in. We'll be back with more right after this quick break. One of the more dominant pitchers in the past for the Selfish, been lightly used this year. And that one sits just low from Webster. High and tight from Webster, 2-0. and And that one's hit out towards low piece at second. Takes the short route. 4-6 put out to retire the side, but this Tampa Spartans scratch another one. It's 7-0 here. Palm Beach Atlantic needs to come back now. In NCAA Division II, student-athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. 
That's because Division II student athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even life-changing impression on all those involved. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Being a champion takes more than talent, more than the perfect pass, more than using your head. Being a champion takes the spirit to always push harder, the ability to overcome any hurdle, and the fire to be the best. Welcome to Division II, where the pursuit is yours to create. And the question isn't, can you do it? It's will you. For the sailfish, for your sailfish the catcher, you can see the wind blowing Sean in at Williams. about 8 miles per hour from the coast. Brinker Athletic Campus situated on the outskirts of downtown West Palm Beach. Just about 2 miles from the Atlantic coast of Florida. Beautiful place to play baseball. And that one inside from Thurmond. Thurmond has been utterly dominant. Only one hit allowed. And he's done it all in 53 total pitches. And that one hits Sean Williams. So finally, Thurmond makes a mistake. How about him for yours? And leadoff this man on. That one sits outside. Matty Warren spits on it. Four ball one. Warren, the only hit of the day so far for the selfish ground ball through the right side under the glove of Doskow. Oh, cool. And that one missed somewhere for the second ball. 2 0 oh is the count. 4-3, put it in your scorebooks. And we're going to the top of the seventh. Sailfish still trailing 7-0. Do you want Sailfish content delivered straight to your inbox? Sign up for the Sailfish Scoop at pbaselfish.com to get customized content delivered directly to your email as soon as it's available online. Customize your content to stay current with your favorite teams or get it all to know the latest from all 18 programs. Sign up today for the Sailfish Scoop at pbaselfish.com. The Sailfish Booster Club is responsible for raising funds to support our athletic teams with travel, uniforms, and equipment. Even small gifts can go a long way in supporting our teams. It is only through the generous gifts of all of our supporters that all the costs of our athletic programs can be funded. If you are currently a member, thank you. If you are not, please visit pbaselfish.com slash give today and become a member of the Sailfish Booster Club.
Leaving off the seventh Fish inning. The third of an inning. The, Spartans, the shortstop, number 11, J.D. Urso. Nobody else warming in the bullpen for the Sailfish. So this inning presumably is Webster's. J.D. Urso doubled deep to left field off the wall his last time. And Webster brings the off speed as his first offering and it's swung and missed. And another swing and a miss. Ryan Webster, two lethal change ups. Gets ahead one and two. And make it, ooh, just got a piece of it. And Sean Williams in some pain after that one. Umpire takes a walk out to the mound to give the catcher a second. Settles back in. One and two remains the count. And that one in the dirt. Two and two. Three and two now. And Ryan Webster, high outside heat, disposes of Urso. Now batting for the Spartans for the, the first out. Nine, Anthony Nunez. And Nunez will flip back around towards the right side. Nunez, two singles on the day. One as a right-handed batter, one as a left-handed batter. And that one in there called strike. That one in there, strike two. And that one's lifted out towards right field. Coming in fast is Housen, but it's gonna fall in front of him. Plays it on a hop. So a blue pit. How about in the designated hitter Off the bat of Nunez finds himself a three for four day. That's 12 hits now for Tampa. Breaking ball breaks right into the zone from Webster. University of Tampa, about a four hour bus ride away. Gulf Coast of Florida. 8,600 students at the school. University of Tampa, number one in the South region, number four overall in the country. One and two is the count on Garavito. Good. 
this upcoming week, during the work week, we've got Barry coming to town on Tuesday and then Assumption on Thursday. And that one fouled away. Good job, good job. Let's go. Two and two, one down. Look over at Nunez at first. Every single SSC team right now sitting above a 500 record except for St. Leo and Nova Southeastern. Nova Southeastern currently three and seven. Conference play just started. And that's a walk issued. To Garavito. Yeah, first baseman, number 25, EJ Doskow. Stay hungry, kids, stay hungry. Go on, boys. You know where you're going. Game on Tuesday that Palm Beach Atlantic will have against Barry will not count as a conference matchup. All of a sudden, Webster losing a bit of control here. And that one's hit right at Casaleggio. And <laughs> they thought about the triple play, but they only need two outs here, folks, so they get it. Out at second base, double play, started by Casaleggio. Seventh inning stretches, folks, grab a hot dog, grab some Cracker Jacks, take the dog for a walk, whatever you gotta do. We'll be back in the bottom of the seventh. Academy Bus is the largest privately owned and operated transportation company in the United States and is the official out-of-town transportation provider of Sailfish Athletics. With a central operations center located here in Palm Beach County, Academy Bus is who our Sailfish teams turn to for away game trips. For more information or to reserve a trip for your group, visit academybus.com. Every Sailfish team aims to look good on and off the field. So when it comes to our Nike apparel needs, we always turn to AdPro Sports. From uniforms to practice gear and everything in between, AdPro Sports outfits all 17 Palm Beach Atlantic sports teams while serving as a one-stop shop from concept to reality. Learn more by visiting adprosports.com. Stretch. But we're ready to get back underway here. Matt Miranda stepping in. 3, 4, and 5 due up for the Sailfish. Tampa working on their second shutout of the year. Miranda and the boys looking to do everything possible to change that. And that one trickles off of the foot of Ferranda. Quickly 0-2. This is what Thurman has been doing all afternoon. Pounding the zone. Misses high and away with that one, but most likely trying to get a chase. And Ferranda 
taps it down to first, short hop picked up by Doskow. So. And Lorenzo rolls one out to Doskow. Three unassisted in your scorebook. Quickly two the away. Number 24, Mikey Casaleggio. Casaleggio takes a strike. And swings at another pitch. So it's 0 2. And that one in the dirt. Thurman. About to bring his 70th pitch of the afternoon. And it misses, so we'll have to throw one more at least. And swing and a miss. Second strikeout of the day for Casaleggio. And the Sailfish are blanked again. We go to the top of the eighth. Names look good on and off the field. So when it comes to our Nike apparel needs, we always turn to AdPro Sports. From uniforms to practice gear and everything in between, AdPro Sports outfits all 17 Palm Beach Atlantic sports teams while serving as a one stop shop from concept to reality. Learn more by visiting adprosports.com. Spartans, the right fielder, number 19, EJ Combo. Welcome back, EJ Combo digs in the left-handed batter's box. Webster on the mound, third sailfish pitcher of the day. Peranda went three innings, allowed five hits, four runs, all, all earned. One walk and five strikeouts. Devin Blair went two and two thirds. Six hits, three runs, all earned. No strikeouts, no walks for Devin Blair. And Webster through one and a third, has only allowed one hit and walked one and struck out one. 
And that one's launched into outer space. Foul. And that one sits outside. Three and two is the count. And up and in. So Webster issues his second walk. Now batting the catcher, number 27, Danny Kutcher. Quickly three balls. Webster not maintaining command here. And four pitch walk. Walks the opposing catcher. And now we'll have a pinch hitter, McAllister Jorgensen. Your attention, Stepping please. in the sophomore the of Tampa, out of Brandon, 16, Florida. McAllister Jorgensen. <laughs> Coach Joe Urso most likely going to empty the bench down the end of this one. Six straight balls from Webster. And that one fouled away. Count evens at one and one. Selfish six and three on the year so far. In danger of going six and four right now. And Jorgensen leaves it down. Two and one is the count. And that one's hit out towards center. Matty Warren drifts back a few strides and pulls it in. Strong throw over towards third, but no chance to get out the advancing runner. Jorgensen Your attention, please. Now pinch hitting is the first three, out of the inning. Jose Cadenas. And here's Jose Cadenas. We saw him yesterday in a pinch hitting role and here he is again. Second and third, one out. Spartans threatening to score again. Oh, 
And that breaking ball misses high. That one looked really good from up here. And that one's fought off the other way. Two and one is the count. And that one turned on down the line. Opportunity to get the play at home. And the play is made. Combo retired at home. Oh, it was a foul ball. Cadena is going to have to come back, do it again. And that one sits outside. <laughs> Webby runs it full. <laughs> and that one's hit over the head of the leaping Dre Lopez. That's going to score too. Cadenas, two RBIs for the senior. Now batting the second baseman, number two, Drew Earhart. Opportunity 4 2, 4 6, 3, double play. Finally, the Selfish navigate out of the inning, but not before two more runs cross the plate. It's 9 0 in favor of Tampa. We're going to the bottom of the eighth in West Palm Beach. We can stop to make sure someone is okay. Get in the way and disrupt the situation. Codify an authority. Or walk them home safely. We can change the language around rape. We can make campuses safer for our teammates, our friends, and our classmates. We cannot be bystanders. Taking action isn't always easy, but it's on, on us. us to intervene. Because we can. Learn more and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Watching a cow. Oh, what's it doing? Impressions. Start your day with the new hash brown scramble bowl from Chick fil A.
team in the entire nation. The third baseman, number 16, Pedro Figueroa. And hard, but won't realize that they will never see the peace. First offering from Linder sits outside. And unloads one to deep left field. That's going back. That's going to be up the gap for extra bases for Petey Figueroa. He'll pull in at second base with a well struck double out towards left center. And that one sits on the outside corner for a strike. Beautiful pitch from Linder. And Hausen unloads one deep left field, going back at the wall, and it falls. Couldn't be handled out there. Petey Figueroa had to hold up at second base. He couldn't advance. He didn't know if that ball would be caught. But Nate Housen making a bid for a home run of his own. So two well-struck hits off of Linder in his first two batters. Now the Sailfish find themselves with second and third. Nobody out. Texel, last time he came up in this situation, he cashed in. And that one scoots past Petey Figueroa breaking for the plate and he'll make it. So that'll be the first run of the game for the Sailfish. Chipping away at the nine run lead of the Spartans. Nothing is said and done in baseball until the final out is recorded. Now Texel still with an opportunity to cash in. Hausen alertly moves up to third base. And that one sits low, so Linder taking himself a little bit of a hole here. And Texel hits one out to center, but that one will get caught. However, Housen races home for the second run, so productive out for Texel. Nine to two, Palm Beach Atlantic at the very least eliminating the shutout. And that one hits the outside corner. Good pitch from Linder regaining control. John Williams looking for his first hit of the day. He reached on a hit by pitch his last time in the sixth. And that one's tapped out towards short, shortstop. Should be handled by Urso. Plays the long hop and the strong throw across. So. Warren had the only hit on the day until Figueroa hit one deep to the gap. Start this inning. And attacking the first pitch, fouls it away.
That one inside, one and one. And that one taking for a strike. Apparently, the yesterday, the scouting report on the starting pitcher for the Spartans was that he was going to go away from lefty batters, but that ended up being incorrect as he pounded inside to lefty batters the entire time. Matt Ferranda explaining that he was set up to try to drive the ball the other way, but saw nothing but pitches in on his hands. Matty Warren, one of those lefty batters that likes to use the opposite field. And right now he's using his good eye. Evens the count, three and two. Three and two, two down, bottom of the eighth. And hit up the middle, past the diving Earhart. And Matty Warren gets his second hit of the day. The second baseman, number 23, Matty Warren adding on to his resume, impressive start to the season. Batting average, approaching 500 on the year, as well as an on-base percentage over 600 now. And that one sits outside. Dre Lopez grounded into a double play his last time. Looking to extend the bottom of the eighth a little bit further. 2-0 oh now. And that one in for a strike. And evens the count back at two and two. Ferranda would be next. And able to leave that one off. You could see the temptation in the eyes of Dre Lopez to swing at that outside pitch, but he leaves it. Matty Warren will get an extra head start off of first. Three and two, two down. Lopez swings and misses, and that brings the bottom of the eighth to a close. But Paul Michelinic, scratch two across, chop, chip away at the lead of the Spartans, and we're going to the ninth from West Palm Beach. The Sailfish Booster Club is responsible for raising funds to support our athletic teams with travel, uniforms, and equipment. Even small gifts can go a long way in supporting our teams. It is only through the generous gifts of all of our supporters that all the costs of our athletic programs can be funded. If you are currently a member, thank you. If you are not, please visit pbaselfish.com slash give today and become a member of the Selfish Booster Club. In NCAA Division II, student athletes leave a lasting impression on their communities. That's because Division II student athletes want to make a difference and truly be part of their surrounding communities. Through community engagement, thousands of student athletes from various backgrounds interact with community members who view them as role models. This interaction leaves a positive and perhaps even life-changing impression on all those involved. In Division II, we rise to the opportunity and make community engagement ours. Please now pitching for your sailfish, number 44, David Chenoweth.
competitive in this game as they did yesterday. They were locked in a 1-1 pitcher's duel yesterday into the eighth inning when Chris Seymour walked a run across and that was the determining factor in the game. Chenoweth, first pitch hit through the hole, fielded on the backhand by Casaleggio impressively, but he won't have any throw. So leadoff man reaches once again for Tampa. Number 15, Adam Hunt. Your attention please, now pinch Back hitting up first for the University baseman, of Tampa. Sophomore Number 15, out of Adam Brandon Hunt. Brandon Florida. Gonna be the lefty pinch hitter. And that one hits the outside part of the zone for a strike. That was a meatball right there. And that one misses outside. Chenoweth dealing out of the stretch now. Book closed on Ryan Webster. He went two and a third, two hits, two runs, three walks, and only one strikeout. One and two, the count on Hunt. And big swing and a miss. Kenneth gets the strikeout, his first one of the year. Another pinch hitter, backup catcher for Joe Urso's squad, Parker. Schlichty coming in. Your attention Sophomore please out of now Fort Lauderdale. Number six, Parker it's about 40 Schlichty. minutes south of West Palm Beach. And that went in tight on the hands of Schlichty. Tenna with the uh, Rex Georgia product. And that one ripped foul. That one's hit out towards right field. Housen measures it and makes the play. For the second out, Schlichty is retired. And the series of pinch hitters continues with TJ Palma now being the next one to step University in. Tampa, number 30, TJ Palma. Sophomore out of Pleasantville, New York. And that one in there for strike. Chenoweth working efficiently here in the ninth. That one in the dirt. Overall, many of the issues that Palm Beach Atlantic have seen over the past couple seasons not really rearing their head recently. They're just playing a very good team in the Tampa Spartans. No errors today for the Sailfish defense. Walks have been limited as well. Stop. Stop. 
And that one's gonna fall. Ben Green out there in center field. Takes Matty Warren out at the end of this game, maybe giving him a breather before the, the 19, second EJ half Combo. of the doubleheader. Coming up 30 minutes after the conclusion of this game. Chenoweth taking a long look at home. And that one's laced up the middle from Combo. And Green fields it, throws it in, but that's gonna be another run across. So Chenoweth gives up a couple consecutive hits here. Your attention please, now batting for the Spartans, number 43, Ryan Middleman. And now it's gonna be Ryan Middleman. Another pinch hitter for Tampa. Valencia, California native. And that one finds the zone from Chenoweth. One and one is the count. And that one low. Palm Beach Atlantic pitching staff working much harder than Tampa in this one. 160 pitches from the Sailfish today, only 93 from the Spartans. And that one in there for a strike. Two and two, two men on, two down, top of the ninth. And that one sits low, count full now. Chenoweth showing some emotion out there. And that one misses. So Chenoweth issues the walk, loads up now the bases. The, Spartans, the left fielder, number 16, McAllister Jorgensen. And now Jorgensen's gonna get another look. And that one's hit out towards center field. Ben Green giving chase back in the gap. Gets there and makes the basket catch. Good work out there by Ben Green. Sending us to the bottom of the ninth. Sailfish trailing by over half a dozen. The Sailfish Booster Club is responsible for raising funds to support our athletic teams with travel, uniforms, and equipment. Even small gifts can go a long way in supporting our teams. It is only through the generous gifts of all of our supporters that all the costs of our athletic programs can be funded. If you are currently a member, thank you. If you are not, please visit pbaselfish.com slash give today and become a member of the Sailfish Booster Club. Do you want Sailfish content delivered straight to your inbox? Sign up for the Sailfish Scoop at pbaselfish.com to get customized content delivered directly to your email as soon as it's available online. Customize your content to stay current with your favorite teams or get it all to know the latest from all 18 programs. Sign up today for the Sailfish Scoop at pbaselfish.com.
Eric Linder set to face off against Matt Ferranda to get things started here in the bottom of the ninth. Last chance for the Sailfish to do anything in this one. Tampa has handled the Sailfish today. 16 hits for Tampa. Leading off the ninth inning for your Sailfish, the designated hitter, number 33, Matt Ferranda. Matt Ferranda has grounded out three times today. Knowing him, he desperately wants to change that narrative. And that one sits outside. And swing and a miss. Brenda chases that outside pitch in nearly the same spot as the previous pitch. And that one good down and in action on the left-handed batter. One and two on Ferranda. And that breaking ball sits high. Would not be surprised if Linder comes back with the off speed. And Ferranda hits it the other way out of play. Ferranda generally very good at protecting the outside part of the plate. More than happy to shoot that ball through the left side as he has done so many times. And he pulls that one just foul. And we'll do it again at two and two. And he rips another one foul. Four consecutive foul balls for Matt Ferranda. Waiting for something he can handle from Linder. And that one's hit out towards second base. Earhart throws over, so four ground ball outs from Ferranda. We'll see if Ferranda's back in there for the second game. Slumping at the plate and pitched three innings to start this game. So having him play the entirety of a doubleheader is kind of a tall ask, but you know, Ferranda's up to it. It's just Coach Bottenfield's decision. Lorenzo 0 for 3 in the box today. And that one's hit pretty well out towards right field, chasing back, and great catch made out there in right field. Now batting the shortstop. They're on the edge of the warning track. Two outs now, Casaleggio 
Last chance for the fish. And he attacks the first pitch, bounces a foul along, along the third baseline. Two strikeouts and a fly out for Casaleggio today. And that one in the dirt, two and one to Casaleggio. And count evens, two and two. Selfish down to their final strike of the afternoon. Well, of this game. And strike three, that'll do it for the Sailfish in this one. 10-2 final, final score, Casaleggio takes his third game. strikeout of the day. 10-2 University of Tampa over Palm Beach Atlantic winning pitcher However, 20, University of Eli Tampa, Thurman, they're gonna hang around for one more game here at Jake Rubin Park. They strung together in approximately 30 minutes. 16 hits, which produced 10 runs. One error committed by Tampa. Two runs on four hits, no errors committed by Palm Beach Atlantic. Don't you go anywhere, folks. We've got more baseball action coming up in just about a half an hour. We'll take a break, and we'll be right back with you on the Sailfish Sports Network. From everyone here, I thank you for watching, and stay tuned for Game 3 of this series.